welcome to chapter five. Uh, we're going to have two parts. The first part, we'll be talking about certain definitions. Okay, so chapter five is about continuous random variables, and we're going to start with uh, defining that. We take it as continuous random variable can take any real value in or on the real line. Okay, so compared to the uh, discrete random variable, we know that it can only take at most a countable number of uh, possible values. A, dis a continuous random variable here can take any real value on the real line, okay? So we give a formal definition here. X is a continuous random variable if there exists a non-negative function, okay, small f, okay? Defined for any value X on the real line, such that for any set B of real numbers, we have the probability that the random variable x is in this range b is defined to be an integral okay, of this p, uh, f function, non-negative f function, okay, integrating over the particular range of b. Okay, so this might sound a little bit vague at this point, but we'll see some examples soon just to uh, get a better understanding of what we really mean uh, by this f, small f function. And then what do we really mean by doing an integral over here, okay? Uh, but for now, let's keep in mind that if we do have, no, we do know there exists a non-negative function f that for any set of b of real numbers, we're able to have this um, integral working uh, to be defined to be the probability of x in b, then um, we have a continuous random variable, okay? And then moreover, this little f function, we call it, probability density function, okay, PDF, okay? So just refresh your memory really quick. In the discrete random variable cases, we only looked at um, what we call PMF, right? Probability mass function, okay? And that was, if you remember the notation that we used to do, is this, okay? So this is a small x, and this is defined to be the probability of the random variable capital X take value of um, small x, okay? So we call that PMF. Okay. only for a discrete case, okay? And now we're introducing the uh, continuous case here, and then we call it the PDF, probability density function, and then it's defined in this particular way, okay? All right, so keep in mind that even though now it's a little bit vague, but we're gonna see some examples and then uh, see some graphic, how to see, um, how to understand it better. So we keep this uh, in mind for the definition for now. And I want to show you some examples of continuous random variable, okay? For example, rainfall amount for a year, uh, lifetime of your first car, and amount of beer consumed on a game day, okay? So all of them, uh, this random variable, okay, can take any value um, on the real line. And in fact, while some of them, like you can see here, like lifetime or amount of beer or rainfall amount, all of them can only take on the positive side of the uh, real line, right? But regardless, it can take infinite number of possible values out there. And that's why we define them to be the uh, continuous random variable. All right, so with that, let's come to PDF and the CDF. So recall, we used to define CDF, right, in the discrete case as well as cumulative uh, density function, okay? And back there, we have, it's a sum, right, for all x small equal to a, we're adding up the PMF value, okay? So that's what we defined before about the CDF, okay? But here you will see that CDF is also defined for continuous random variables. So for PDF to be valid, okay? Um, first of all, uh, it has to be non-negative, okay? But also it's well-defined, okay? Or like we said, validness, okay? What that means is that for a, um, continuous random variable x, okay? If we know it's PDF, okay? If we integrate it, uh, integrate it over from negative infinity to positive infinity, meaning that I'm integrating over all possible values of x, it has to be one, okay? Into, uh, alternatively, you can think of it as the probability of x is smaller than positive infinity greater than negative infinity, which means that x is on the real line, so the probability has to be one. Okay, so depending on what kind of continuous random variable we work with, this is a rule that has to follow. And then sometimes we use this as a way to uh, compute certain unknown quantities. Okay, so you'll see those in the examples later as well, or in those live exercises. All right, so now we uh, can define the CDF function. Okay, the CDF function 
Uh, we also call it capital F, okay? We use a uh, small a just to represent any values that we can think of. So by definition, we know that it's the probability of the random variable x small or equal to a, okay? And then uh, uh, instead of doing a summation up to a, if you remember for the discrete random variable, right now we're doing integration, okay? And intuitively we're integrating from negative infinity because that's the lowest possible value of the random variable x, right? Up to the value of a, because we're evaluating up to that point, okay? So the CDF, okay, as you can see over here, uh, is defined to be an integral for a continuous random variable, okay? Uh, there are a couple of other properties that we need to uh, keep in mind, okay? So for continuous random variable, the probability uh, to be at a single point is actually zero, okay? This is a very unintuitive result, I think, to many uh, learners, okay? So let's take a look at why that is the case. By definition, okay, we know we have this fx, okay, we have fx as the PDF of the random variable, okay, if I need to know the probability of x takes value e exactly a, this is what I need to know, right, and note it that if I want to know this probability, it is equivalent to integrate my PDF function from this point to this point. Okay, so regardless of what the fx is, okay, whatever form it takes, you see that you're integrating from the point to itself, so that probability is going to be zero. Okay, and also just to um, bring you back, why is the case that we're doing this particular integral is because if we come back to the previous slide, okay, if we looked at the first time that we define this uh, continuous random variable, okay, for any set of b, okay. This is how you're going to get the probability, okay? So for us to get the probability that x is exactly a, small a, that we're interested in knowing, then it is equivalent of integrating um, of the fx, the PDF function, in that set. And then for this case, in that set, exactly integrating from a to a, okay? So that's another reason, okay, that you can think of, um, another way that you can think of why we're doing this um, integrate integration over here. Okay, and um, also just so you know, over here, um, for probability of x smaller than a, okay, and this is actually what we learned earlier for the discrete random variable as well, it's equivalent of getting the probability, okay, of x small or equal to a minus the probability of x equals to a. But then we know that for any random variable, okay, continuous random variable, the probability of taking uh, at a particular single point is zero. So regardless of whether you're doing smaller or smaller equal to, um, both of these cases gonna lead you to FA, which is the CDF, okay? So this is, like I said, another way to think about it is that, well, this is zero, always zero, okay? So uh, it is the same as if you are thinking about the definition of the CDF, okay, is uh, integrating up to this point A, so smaller equal to, okay? But because at that point is zero, so this two, are always equal to each other. Okay, so this again, may be a little bit unintuitive at the first glance, okay? But hopefully as we see more of examples and then the definitions uh, back and forth multiple times, it starts to make more sense, okay? Uh, lastly, a probability on an interval. Okay, so uh, this is what we have seen before as well, okay? That uh, for, the uh, for the discrete random variable case, we know that, well, if I want to know the axis between this a and B, I can simply take the difference of the CDF evaluated at the larger number minus the CDF evaluated at the smaller number, okay? But then for continuous case, because at including those points, um, it doesn't really matter because at any single point, the probability of zero, so this two equal each other again, okay? So those are uh, results follow from the discrete random variables. But then of course, we have some uh, special cases here uh, just because uh, this particular result that we know the probability at any uh, given point is a zero. So you will have those uh, new results that we're showing down over here. Okay. All right. So now let's take a closer look of how we really understand what the CDF is doing, what the PDF is doing. Okay. So earlier we define what PDF is. Okay. And then we show you that while well, in order to uh, get uh, the definition, you're integrating for a given set of uh, B, you're integrating in that range, right? And then we also talk about how you are able to get the probability from the CD, uh, from uh, the PDF to the CDF, okay? So now the connection, okay, between 
uh, PDF and CDF um, is just like what we have seen with the discrete case as well, that if you know PMF, right, probably mass function, you can get to its CDF. Okay, if you know the CDF, you can also get it to the PDF. Okay, so here, the connection between the PDF and the CDF is similar. Okay, you can go one way or another, okay, because they contain pretty much the same amount of information if you think in that way. So if you know one, you can always get to the other. So we have seen the connection uh, in this way just now. Uh, the, if you know the PDF, okay, FX, you can get the um, CDF, right, by doing integral, okay? But now, how can you find the PDF if you know the CDF, okay? So mm, a really quick way to think about that is that, well, if I need to take an integration, right, I take an integral to get PDF to CDF, then uh, to get the other way from CDF to PDF, we simply take a differentiation. Okay, you take the first order derivative of the random variable. Okay, so if you know the CDF, okay, you take the first order derivative with, with respect to X, and then you're gonna come to the CD, uh, PDF. Okay, so this is a really important result. Okay, maybe in many cases easier to do than in the discrete case, because if you remember in the discrete case, we kind of have to graph it and then figure out uh, certain special points, the starting points, the endpoints of finding out the um, PDF or a PMF or the CD uh, or the CDF, vice versa. Okay, and lastly, uh, I show this graph um, at the beginning. Okay, just now. Okay, so one way to think about it is that like this curve. Okay, the way that we're thinking about the curve, right, is exactly what we are uh, showing the PDF. Okay, so this is the PDF. Okay, it is the probability density function. Okay, and then in order to get the probability, right, in the shaded region, okay, if I want to know this probability, which is axis between A and B, what I'm doing, right, like what we talked about earlier, is that you're integrating the PDF, okay, in this particular range, okay, and one way to think about it is, well, how, how am I supposed to understand that if I take the first order derivative, I will get the CDF from the PDF, right? So one way you can think about it is that at this particular point, for example, right? And I think about a super small interval, okay? In order to get the height, which is the PDF function, right? I'm doing a super small interval in this case and then take the first order derivative. So I will be able to, um, get, so the super small interval here, if I integrate over here, this particular super thin bar is telling me the probability at this point, okay? For a super small interval. So at the particular point is zero, like what we talked about, but if you think about a super small interval, you can still integrate it, okay? But then you take the first order derivative that gives you the height, okay? So that's another way you can understand this graph, but then of course the graph uh, is the in the first place trying to show us how you're able to um, get the, uh, shaded area, uh, the area of the shaded region from the PDF itself, and then how to understand it, okay? So to give us a quick example, okay, suppose that X is a continuous random variable, okay, and we give you the PDF, okay? The PDF is C, okay, so this is something that we have to solve, okay? So Fx is C times 8x minus 4x cubed, okay? If X is between 0 and 1, and it's going to be 0 otherwise, okay? The question is asking you the value of C, Okay, so C is the unknown that we're trying to solve. Okay, and um, for this type of question, you will notice that, well, uh, the, the strategy that we're taking here is that we need to, one, one rule that we know about the CDF, right, is that if you integrate over uh, the entire uh, real line region, okay, it should integrate to one. Okay, so we're gonna use this rule okay, to show how you're able to um, solve the C. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the uh, result in one page here um, just now, but just so you know, uh, C is the one that we're trying to solve, right? And we're doing, uh, even though we start off with integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity, but then based on the particular form of the PDF that we're seeing here, we're really integrating just from zero to one, okay? And then of course, C is a constant and you're trying to solve and then you do the integration. So make sure that, well, uh, the integral, okay, of um, 8x, right, is 4x squared, okay? For minus 4x cubed is x to the power of four. Okay, so those are uh, integration uh, differentiation results that you have learned from calculus two in the past. So make sure that you uh, brush up your skills on this, right? And then you're evaluating it uh, from one, uh, zero to one, okay? so in the end, C equals to one over three.
Okay, so in the live exercise session, you will see a couple of uh, follow-up questions based on this, uh, further exploring the features of um, the continuous random variable. Okay, all right. Uh, lastly, I just want to talk about this interpretation. I talked about it earlier just now when we were thinking about like a graph, right? Like say thinking about this is the particular area, right? A and B, and I'm trying to find the probability earlier, okay? So earlier I was saying that, well, to understand what we really mean by PDF, okay? What we really mean by PDF is called the probability density function, okay? It is not probability itself, right? Like we know for any point, at any point, we know that for a continuous random variable, the probability of taking any point is zero, okay? However, the PDF does tell us about how likely it is around it, it is to be around that point, okay? So that's what I mean. If we take a super small value h, okay? That is like we're creating an interval of length 2h around any point, okay? So like here around any x point, okay? So essentially we're trying to find out, right? The probability of x is between the super small interval of length h, okay? Negative h over two plus net, net plus h over two over here, okay? So essentially we're doing this integral, okay? We're using a, dummy variable here just to represent um, the integration over here. Okay, so if you do the math over here, okay, you will see that the probability, okay, in this super tiny interval here is h, which is the width of this interval, right? And then times fh, uh, f, uh, fx, sorry. Okay, so the probability, okay, in this particular, for a random variable x in this p p p <laughs> super tiny interval, is the length of the interval, right, times fx. And we know that this curve is fx, okay? So the larger the fx is, the more likely x is to be near x, okay? So just to highlight it one more time, PDF does not tell us the probability of the random variable taking any value because we know that for a continuous random variable, the probability of taking any value is always zero, okay? However, the PDF does tell us the likelihood, okay? How likely it is for the random variable x to be near x, okay? So this is one way to think about it. So the PDF itself, even though it's not about probability, but it does tell us a lot about how this random variable is like, okay? So to recap, okay, we define uh, the random variable can take more than countable number of values on the real line, okay? And we define it uh, using the PDF in the first place, okay, fx, right? Integrating over this particular range, okay, is the probability of um, x is in this range, okay? And then we talk about the CDF function, okay? And um, again, instead of a summation, we're doing an integration, okay? From the lowest possible value up to this point that we're doing, okay? And lastly, between the PDF and the CDF, okay? If you know oh, PDF, okay? PDF, okay, here. And then this is taking the first order derivative of the CDF to get the PDF. Okay, and I will just make one more note over here. Notice that sometimes we use dummy, dummy variable. Okay, this is just to differentiate from x. Okay, so here the small x is the um, uh, value that we're thinking about in the CDF. Okay, so if you're trying to do it as a definition or just like to differentiate, because if you write x here and x again here, it's a little bit confusing, right? So you can always use a different uh, variable just to represent um, this random variable here. 